in this module is data processing. So this is sometimes called workflows, data workflows. And uh, let's say we have to train a photo popularity predictor and, and different things kind of trend different every single day. It's changing, so we want to retrain it every night. So for each photo, we got to have the, the metadata, like when was this photo posted, the title that the user gave, the location they took it at, maybe something about the user, like how many times did they log in today, how many followers did they have, something like that. Uh, we think that you know, photos of cats become popular more, you know, more often than, than dogs. So to, to, uh, to be able to use that, we're actually going to run our cat and dog classifier on all the photos that are uploaded and then store the results somewhere. And uh, OK, so where's the metadata? So the posting time, title, location, that's in our database. The features of the user, like how many times did they log in today? Maybe that's in our database if we increment that. But maybe not. Maybe it's in our logs only. So actually, we need to compute how many times the user logged in from the logs. And then the photo classifiers, we either store that somewhere else, or we actually need to run them every single night at training time. And so the idea there is like you have different sources of data, and they might have different dependencies. So maybe to train our final model of photo popularity, we first need to run our content classifiers, right? So a feature, an input feature to the model we're trying to train is an output of another model that we need to run. Um, so if I finish running the, the classifiers and I finish aggregating the logs to see how many users logged in that day, now I'm ready to launch the actual training. So the simplest thing we can do is basically like a make file. So we can say, OK, this thing depends on these things. And then I can traverse the, the tree of that and say, like, well, this thing depends on these things. And I can kind of like keep executing. And if something changed, they can re-execute just from that point. So people have been doing that since you know, the 60s in make files or 80s. The limitations are, OK, what if? Uh, it depends on content or some kind of like processing of the data, not just on the date. What if the dependencies are actually not just files, but like database states or programs that need to run? What if I actually can't run this one thing on just my machine? I have to run it on like a big cluster, so like uh, the, the, the content predictors. And then also, what if I'm not the only person doing this kind of stuff at my company? What if there's hundreds of people that all need to run overnight on a bunch of different data sources? So that gets into something called uh, data workflows. And Airflow is the, the, the current winner of, of this state of or this um, space. So Airflow is a Python kind of native thing where you can define operators. The operators can be built in to Airflow. But you could also just have arbitrary Python code. You wrap it in like the Airflow operator kind of wrapper. And then, um, so basically, any code you can think of can be an Airflow operator. And so what you're actually doing is you're constructing a DAG of a direct a cyclical graph, basically a graph of dependencies where like you can't kick off this operator until these operators finish. And then what Airflow can do for you then is uh, compute this graph and then correctly submit things to a queue, make sure the workers actually finish their jobs. If a worker fails, restart that part of the work, uh, give you a dashboard of the progress, uh, remember to kick it off every night, like have permissions, like all the you know, extra stuff that, that makes this actually complicated software development. So that's good to know about, but until you actually have those problems, you know, let's try to keep things simple. And like I said in the previous lecture, like, don't over-engineer. Like, try to do the simplest thing that might work first. And then if it breaks or you, have, like, you understand why you have a problem, then you try to solve that problem with a more complicated solution. So for example, you know, Unix, just like the shell that we all have, has powerful parallelism, has data streaming, uh, is very optimized like grep and stuff like that um, tools. So there's a fun blog post from a few years ago called Command line tools can be 235 times faster than your Hadoop cluster. And so the, I think this was like a log analysis. I think there was like a, like a, a terabyte or something of, of logs. And the problem was to find every time something happened. So you had to like search for a specific sequence of words in the logs. So on Hadoop, it took 26 minutes to do. 
because you had to like spin up all the HDFS stuff and map and reduce it and so on. But this simple uh, Unix thing took 70 seconds. So it's just uh, reads all the files, the cat, uh, all the PGN files, which is the log format. Then pipes that over to uh, grep for the word result, pipes that over to sort, pipes that over to unique. And so the thing about these pipes is that they actually all happen in parallel. So the catting, uh, which is like printing the file, the grepping, which is searching in the files, the sorting, which is sorting, that, that all happens at the same time. So that's really powerful. So if you have a multi-CPU machine, they all run on separate CPUs. And then furthermore, there's like more juice you can squeeze out of this by replacing things like instead of, um, I think instead of sort, uh, this person switched to uh, awk, and then he parallelized it by calling awk with xargs, which is kind of like that parallel command that you guys saw in lab. So that distributed over even more. So he got it down to 18 seconds from 26 minutes. So that might or might not be relevant to you, but I think it's just a good example to keep in mind as like, yeah, okay, airflow, it's a lot of code. Maybe you feel like you need to use it, but maybe you don't. Maybe all you need is this one command line. So you guys have any questions? All right, well, thank you. And Josh is up next.